right, welcome everyone to Read Atlantic Voices, um, where we try to uh, highlight voices that traditionally have not been heard enough um, and give them a little more attention. And we've got so many great uh, Indigenous writers and artists uh, publishing books now, um, either from within Atlantic Canada or through Atlantic Canadian publishers. Um, so I'm happy to introduce two such artists, well-known artists today. Um, the first is Jackie Travers. Jackie is the mother of three daughters and a grandmother to Lily. She is an Anishinaabe multidisciplined artist working in video, sculpture, mixed media, and paint. And she is known across Canada for her powerful and beautiful art. She's the author illustrator of two books, uh, Sacred Feminine, and an indigenous art coloring book, and Ikwe, honoring women, life givers, and water protectors. She is also the founder of Indigenous Rock the Vote and Ikwe Safe Ride, a ride sharing network that offers safe rides for indigenous women. She lives in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Welcome to Jackie. And I'll also extend a uh, welcome to the program to artist Alan Silboy, who studied privately with Shirley Bear and attended the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, where 25 years later, he was invited to sit on the Board of Governors. Alan looks to the indigenous Mi'kmaq petroglyph tradition for inspiration and develops his own artistic vocabulary out of these forms. He is the author illustrator of four children's books, Wolverine and Little Thunder, The Thundermaker, Mi'kmaq Animals and Mi'kmaq Daily Drum. So welcome, Alan. Welcome to you both. And I will bow out and let you both take over the conversation from here. Hi. How are you? I'm good. So how do you say your last name? Syllaboy. Syllaboy. Okay. I first uh, saw your work probably about 10 years ago. I um, I was looking up work on, I think it was, I think it's called Bear Claw in Edmonton. Yes. Yeah. So I saw your work there and then. I looked at your art and then I Googled you. So I knew about you for a while already. Your style is very unique. That's what caught my eye because it's um, it's so different from anything I've ever seen. Like um, I'd say like woodlands, you know, like out, out here in Manitoba, the woodland style and then BC style, it's so different. So when I found out that um, you're from, um, is it Nova Scotia or like you're Mi'kmaq, right? Yeah, Nova Scotia, yes. Yeah, so yeah, I was like, wow, very different style compared to the rest of uh, Indigenous Canada. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, yeah, I, yeah, that's one thing I try to do is not to be influenced by anyone too much. You know, uh, I, I appreciate a lot of art, you know, but I, I try to just sort of uh, stay in my own little, little world, you know? And, yeah. Uh, I, I, I try to do that, you know, try to be unique in my own. And, and we, you know, we, we have petroglyphs and so on, but we, we, you know, we had first contact. So we've been, you know, 400 years of, uh, of uh, things disappearing, you know, and memories and all yeah. of that, you know, so it's, so it leaves it kind of wide open to interpretation. There isn't, you know, so we kind of go with that. Right. So the petroglyphs are are these actual petroglyphs that you're kind of like um, saving with your art, like for history, or are some of them like are you creating your own? I'm doing all of that, I think. You know. Yeah. Uh, originally, it was Shirley Bear, you know, was a Maliseet artist, and she was. We we're doing a, a an art program, and and uh, we we're going to teach. And this is 1970, right? So I was just in my teens and, and she recruited me for this program. So, but, you know, she was a painter already, you know, and, uh, but, and she was teaching me. That's my first art lessons with her and so on. But she brought this book, this petroglyph book. So it was really an unknown, you know? We didn't know our own petroglyphs or any, any of that. It was first time I've ever seen it. and. So we, you know, we kind of like, oh, these these ones are women ones, and she'll 
took those and she said, you can have these ones. And we kind of split them up. It's kind of funny, actually. But, you know, that didn't last long. We were doing, you know, I love doing women uh, petroglyphs too. That, I love that. But so, no, we're sort of like putting that word out and teaching ourselves about petroglyphs. See, we didn't know. It was an unknown. You know, we had very little, you know. So it was kind of op wide open that way. And that's all my life I've been kind of promoting that and using it and, and uh, you know, but that's that's a basis that that's truly Mi'kmaq and that's what I was trying to find. And it's, and it's so, you know, so small that uh, we've lost so much, you know? It's great though, because at some point they were made by somebody, right? So yeah. here you are in history making your own. So yes. they had to be done by somebody. So it makes total sense. Oh yeah, you know, I think so. to revive yeah, that the really, form. Yeah, the only marks on the ground they left us. You know, it was just and visuals are hard to come by. You know. So do you make your living full time as an artist? Yes, I have for the last uh, I'd say twenty five years or so. I mean, but I've always like I've never uh, since since nineteen seventies I've been an artist too. You know, mostly, uh, but not full time. You know that got to be later. You know the the full time thing, but and it, you know it's just a long hard struggle. You know it's just well you know all about that. You know it's just it's tough making a making a go of art, especially here and and uh, you know. But to me, I mean, I I I I couldn't see myself as anything else. I mean, I've I've done different things, but you know that was just a so I could do my art. You know that wasn't. I went to art school on uh, 2004. Mm -hmm. So it took me five years. I was a single mom. And yeah. uh, I've been self-employed since graduation, 2009. And I just, I just knew I was going to do it, you know, and um, there was no other option for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was like I couldn't work. I couldn't work a job. Um, I had to do this. So there was no option. Yeah, it was a struggle at first. Um, then it, it got it got really easy and like being like the new, like kind of like the new artist on the scene. So people were snapping up my work and then it faded out. And now I'm at like I've been doing this now since 2009. So 11 years. So now I'm kind of like comfortable and able to do um more of what I want and I'm not always um feeling oh I have to create so I can I can pay my rent this month you know what I mean like and just pray to creator that I make some sales you know but they just kind of uh it's kind of um they just come to me I don't worry you know I, I just believe and I receive so it's 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 been a struggle but now it's getting easier and I'm grateful for that. Yeah, me too. I think, you know, well, I've been around him a while, so, you know, but he has, now he's, is, yeah, doing, doing good. Everything is fine, but, uh, you know, I have no regrets over any choices I've made, you know, because I knew mm -hmm. that was the only thing for me, really. So, you know, I also brought up three kids on my own too, you know, so, you know, that I had to, there was a big, a gap there, you know, where I had to be the parent and, um, you know, it was hard. But once they grew, you know, I got my own studio and got to be uh, me time, you know, and that's the way it's been ever since. So. And I've been enjoying that a lot. So I watched a bit of that clip on uh, APTN when you guys painted the boat. The eight oh, pointed yeah. star. Yeah, yeah the eight yeah. pointed star. Yeah. Yeah. Is that one of your petroglyphs? Yeah, the eight point star is one of the major, major Migma designs, right? That that's probably one of the most important there is, and then you know, it it it, uh, it depicts uh, the districts of uh, Mi'kma'ki. You know, it's kind of it, it's kind of the center. You know, it shows it shows it. It's it 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 all has uh, all the all the uh, um uh, districts are shown there and everything so 
yeah, the Mi'kmaq are is, is is probably the most used or most, yeah, uh, you see that in, in all kinds of forms, right? And, you know, some businesses use it and everybody, you know, it's just absolutely. And it's a, it's a big petroglyph too. It's, it's pretty, pretty major one. Is it like, is it a creation of yours? Oh, no, 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 oh. no. In there, I mean, there's eight pointed stars. There's one, um, and they found in uh, Bedford, which isn't far from me. It's uh, Halifax is not that far from me, actually, about an hour away. And they they found a, a petroglyph there of an eight point star. You know, that's uh, they don't know how old it is really, but it's the only one that's kind of embedded in. Uh, um, rock, you know, it's in about half an inch, and someone took a, an awful long time to carve make, it, right? And the rest are just kind of light, and they're scratches on, on, uh, you know, so they're quite different than this particular one. But it's really major because Halifax is considered a sacred place, you know. So yeah, I know it's important that it's there, and you know. I've been to Halifax, I've been to New Brunswick and Nova Scotia for oh. film festivals. So yeah, I know how beautiful it is out there. Oh, great. So what kind of projects are you working on right now? Well, uh, we do kind of a, a few of them. We're doing music as well. You know, I do, a, I have a band called Thundermakers and and uh, we do, I do spoken word with them, you know, and oh, I nice. as a guitarist and, and uh, you know, we do sort of a uh, an improv kind of thing, you know, and we just did a thing with the uh, Nova Scotia Symphony. We did uh, a piece with them, uh, a collaboration, you know. So, but, you know, being an artist and being in a band, you can kind of go in any direction, right? If you can get all visual, you can get, you know, uh, so it's, you have a lot of you're not a typical band trying to get on radio you, you know you can make an, an art project anytime can break out right so yeah uh, you know it's, yeah it's, I'm enjoying that a lot so uh, that's major thing I paint it try to paint every day and, and that kind of thing try to keep busy well I am busy really it's just now you get older you can pick your spots a little better you know mm -hmm. So how long have you been in uh, the art scene for? Since 1970? Yeah, since 1970, really, I have. Yeah, I went to art school in, in uh, MASCAD, you know, for a little while, you know, but I, I just wanted to kind of uh, sort of uh, look it over. You know, I never had the uh, uh, graduation was really, uh, wasn't on my mind, really. I mean, uh, but, you know, it was good because there you got to meet, you know, people from all over the world and made the horizon much bigger, right? As a somebody young, right? And in, in a, we're in a little place, so. But yeah. you, know, you meet people from Tokyo and everywhere, you know, all these artists, it's very, very good, you know. Enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah. How about you? What are you doing now? What's... I recently got a second studio. I have a, I had a small space mm -hmm. and I outgrew it since the since COVID because I've been painting a lot. Mm -hmm. So I have like so many canvases in there and there's there's not enough space in there to work. So a space came, became available. So I got nice a nice big space. Now I can do large scale. And uh, so I've just been painting whatever I want. <laughs> I don't have no commissions right now. I have a couple small ones, but um, it's just nice to not have that stress. I just go and paint what I want and, you know, and just let it, let it pile up with the other ones. I have about 40, 40 pieces since um, COVID. Like that's a lot to produce in a year. Um, but it, it's, it taught me a lot of patience, you know, since this all began the lockdown and everything so um like there's nothing to uh what you call it sidetrack me or take my attention yeah. away, you know yeah. i'm just really focused on my painting so 
Um, mm -hmm. I got a few offers, like um, my publisher that I did the coloring book with, he's asked me um, to do a third book. So I might be doing that. Um, and then I might be doing a picture book. So I'm just waiting. I'm waiting to hear back from certain people, but I've been teaching mainly. That's how I've been getting by, how I've been surviving. I've been, it started off as uh, just to do something uh, fun with people that were in quarantine. You know, their people were like so bored and having a hard time, like um, in isolation and stuff. So I started doing um, paint classes on my Facebook and I I'd go live and I wasn't charging any money. It was just to be with other people and, you know, teach them how to paint and um, lift their spirits up. So I started doing that. I did about five um, at the beginning of uh, the quarantine. And then I, I got uh, a grant and I did more for the community of, uh, for the city of Winnipeg, whoever wanted to get involved. And now it's become my income. So it's kind of uh, funny how that happened. But that's how I've been because everybody wants everybody's doing art, you know, everybody's picking up new hobbies and um, a lot of people are getting into painting, sewing, um, so many things. Gardening is a big thing now, you know. So, um, yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've been doing a lot of paint classes. So I have one after this, actually. That's great. I mean, uh, it's the same with me, I, you know. Uh, well, you know. And, and trying to uh, scratch out a living all these years, you know, so you end up uh, saying you'll do this and you'll do that. It, you have no choice. You're kind of, uh, then it gets, you're doing all sorts of things that you never thought you, you would be doing, you know, teaching, of course, and, and that sort of thing too. But, uh, you know, it, it, it adds to the mix, you know, it's, it's really good. But, uh, and then uh, I, I've enjoyed it. You know, so now, um, and then the children's book thing too really wasn't uh, meant to. I didn't. Ha I don't have any long range plans that way. I'm saying five years. I'm doing this and that. I don't. You know, I'm more concerned about what I'm doing this week. You know, or instead, you know, I don't have. But they just one thing kind of uh, leads to something else, right? And I did this uh, uh, art. Uh, show in, uh, in New Brunswick in Lord Beaverbrook and I, had a, I wrote all these panels so you know this this story you know this stone canoe story and I wrote all these panels you know and and I had a little you know five minute animation the animation school is in Truro so it's just down the street so I went to see the students and they all helped me out with a little animation and, and uh, I wrote all these panels and then the animation, you know, was picked up. We, we, uh, Nancy Ackerman and, and me, we, uh, you know, filmmaker, and we did a thing for the, the Olympics the animation, you know, Little Thunder, you know, that's how that started. And then writing the panels and all of that, that, you know, became a book and it's just kind of started from that. So, but I, I'm glad I don't have any set line, big plans or anything. You know, you just kind of stumble on things and it will work out, you know, so it's kind of good. I'm really happy all about that. So, yeah, when you say like, oh, you, you end up doing things that you didn't know you could do. Like, I, I don't, I don't know where I learned how to teach, but I remember probably about 10 years ago, I was only a year out of um, art school. I, um, an art, um, teacher got a hold of me he was the um art programmer for the whole uh Winnipeg school district and he asked me if I could teach and if um how I'd like to do a, if I'd like to do a 21 foot mural with the students at this school and I'm like I need the work right I've never taught before but I'm like oh yeah I could teach eh I'm not gonna say I can't but because I need to survive so I just went in this thing knowing that I could do it, you know, I never doubted myself. And uh, it turned out really good. And it turns out I'm just kind of like, um, I'm, I'm a natural when it comes to, I think a lot of Indigenous um, 
people are naturals when it comes to teaching because we're visual learners. So I, I just, I kind of, uh, I like to do a demonstration of how, how I do things first. And I don't mind doing that a second time again to be actually working with the person that I'm teaching. So yeah, uh, that's how I teach. I, 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 I teach by example. So I'll do something ahead of time, let them watch. And, and then the second time they'll get to join me and, um, yeah, it turns out like I didn't know I had that in me either. But when you got to pay rent and eat, you can do pretty much anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think we're uh, two artists as we are communicators too, you know, and I think that makes it makes it easier for us, you know, to communicate and get across an idea to someone, you know, to yeah. pay or whoever, you know, and I, I think that's that's sort of uh, we have that trait naturally, you know, and I think make the, it makes it a lot easier that way. Exactly. Um, I never, I never knew that I would uh, ever illustrate a book or like write my own book. But it, my the coloring books are different. They're not like um, like a, they're not like a written book. It's just they have little stories to go with each drawing that I did, mm -hmm. and. Um, I just, I never thought, you know, when I was uh, starting art school that, you know, when I was beginning my career that this was what I wanted to do. It's just, there was a, a big craze about eight years ago, eight, nine years ago with the adult coloring books. And I, I looked online and I saw that um, there, there hadn't been one made by an indigenous woman yet. So um, I have a friend that has, well, my friend that has the Fernwood Publishing and I, I did book covers for them. Like I, over the years, I did a lot of book covers for them. So uh, every time I would see them somewhere, I would uh, ask about, can we do the book? Like, can, can we do a adult coloring book? And I, I was told no, I think it was four times that no, we don't do coloring books. Jackie, that's not something we do at, uh, Fernwood but and then the fifth time he said yes let's do it and I was so happy and he said his reason was because they had never done a coloring book an adult coloring book so they never they never saw themselves um doing that and they didn't know how to do it but he wanted to learn and I wanted to learn too because I'd never made a book either so it was it was a really fun experience and we did so well with the first book that um he, he asked if I'd like to do a second book and then it's probably a couple months ago I was asked to do a third book so pretty excited about that and I think this would probably be the final book because I'm not really an illustrator I would much rather be painting and doing mixed media but it's nice that I could leave these books behind for my grandchildren you know they can they can color these books when in the future when I'm not here. I think that too, for, for me, doing children's books, you know, is like, uh, it, it's a good way to instill change. You know, if you start with uh, young children, you know, you know that, uh, that know about the, the culture, right? And then also mine have language in it, you know, I had Mi'kmaq as well, so. You know, I have uh, I have lots of little kids all over the place speaking Mi'kmaq, you know. <laughs> it's That's awesome. kind of really cool, you know. I never thought that would ever happen, but here we are, you know. Are you fluent? No, not at all. In fact, um, uh, we you go into school, I was fluent. I, we spoke only Mi'kmaq. But, you know, the, the letter came, you know, from the school. It, it was a Catholic school, you know, and they said you can't. We're not, you can't speak Mi'kmaq anymore, you know, it's going to hold you back and all that. So that stopped right there. And the language just stopped right there. And uh, then television also appeared at the same time. So, you know, the language is gone in no time. But I remember, you know, always talking to everybody in Mi'kmaq, you know. So, you know, you, you, you've gone to school and you've lost their language. And that's why I did very badly in school. You know, I had my education was very, very, you know, not very good at all. But, uh, you know, uh, however, you know, I've managed to 
you know, sort of go over and get get past all of that. But it wasn't a very good start, you know. So that's where my drawing began because I couldn't communicate. So I was starting to draw underground uh, artist in school, you know. That's what I was. So here I am, you know. It's after uh, after all this time. You would draw something if you couldn't verbally say it. Well, no, I just liked the idea of drawing, you know, enjoyed it then. And I was like, you weren't allowed to do it. In fact, if you got caught, and I did a few times, and we had paid a price for that. But, you know, my my schoolmates really enjoyed what I did, you know, and that sort of spurred me on. That's my first audience, you know, and I just kept it going, you know, that was the thing, you know, I just enjoyed doing it. And uh, it led to all of this you know, naturally, I guess you put it that way. That's how I made friends. I was often in different uh, new schools. Um, I'm a 60s scooper. So I yeah. was in, I was in foster care a lot. So I would be like the new student from one home to the next. And um, I kind of just like went inward and I would just, I don't, I don't want to bother making friends because I know I'm going to be you know, only there for a short time and I'm going to be moved again. Right. Yeah. So I just didn't, I didn't really communicate with people. I would just sit at my desk and I would draw, but people would see my, like other students would see my drawing and they'd be like amazed and be like, wow. And then that's how I made, I made some friends, you know, but it was always in me from the time I was a little girl, probably about four. My uncle was an artist and I remember watching him and, uh, knowing that that's what I want to do too, as when I grew up, I wanted to be an artist. So drawing has always been, um, I love drawing, but now I'm a painter. So I don't really draw no more and I don't really enjoy it. I rather paint, so yeah. But it's a good tool. It's a good tool to make friends. And um, I also tell like a lot of my students that they, they should practice drawing if they want to get better at painting. You know, because it can, especially if you're doing certain types of things, it can help you. So when I teach, that's what I do first. I teach them how to draw the image out. <clears throat> and then uh, we draw it twice and then we paint it. So, yeah. That's great. Well, yeah. well it's been an honor to, to meet you. I never, ever thought I'd have a conversation with you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like 10, 10 years ago, I was like looking up at looking your work up on the Bear Claw Gallery and never thought one day I'm going to sit there and have a Zoom. I, we didn't even know what Zoom was back then, no. 10 years ago. And then I never thought I'd actually get to have a Zoom conference with you and get to learn more about you. So it's been uh, a true blessing. I'm grateful. Well, I really enjoyed meeting you on um, Zoom and, uh, you know, uh i hope um uh you have a, a good career you know and uh, you know everything goes well for you I, I, uh, and it's really enjoyed this very much so you know so well, thank, thank you so much okay. maybe one day we'll our paths will cross we'll get to work together who knows yeah, absolutely absolutely yeah. okay okay. Great. okay take care alan Great. all right bye-bye